O-level practical exam, uh, some pointers that you need to watch out for. Okay, so first of all, the precision of some common instrument. So first one, meter rule or measuring tape, right? So the precision will be what? 0 0.1 cm or 0 0.001 meter. So for example, uh, you'll be like 23.6 cm, so 1 dp, okay? Or if it's in meter, right, it will be in 3 dp, 0 0.500 meter. So you have to watch out whether they want you to leave it in cm or meter, okay? So you just follow this precision. For vernier calipers, it will be what? 2 dp in cm, 0 0.01 cm, okay? For example, like 1.05 cm or 3.16 cm. Next one, micrometer screw gauge. So it will be 0 0.01 mm, so both of them are 2 dp. But vernier caliper will be in cm, and then micrometer screw gauge will be in mm. Next one, electronic balance. So usually it will be 0 0.01 gram, okay, so it's 2 dp, or you can just follow the display of the balance, okay. So example is 10.01 gram. Protractor will be 1 degree. Measuring cylinder will be 1 cm cube, okay, nearest whole number. And then a thermometer. So the precision will be 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. So it can be either what 26.5 or for example 24.0. So it's one decimal place. So the one decimal place can either be a zero or a five only. Okay. Digital stopwatch. So usually it will be 2 dp, 0 0.01 second, or you can just follow the display of the stopwatch. Usually it should be 2 dp. Okay, for example, 15.09 second. Next, volt meter. So the smallest division will be at 0 0.05 volt. So it will be 1.15 volt or 2.10 volt, 2 dp. And you realize second decimal place, right, can either be a 5 or a 0. Okay, only these two number. Next one, ammeter. So the accuracy is 0 0.01 ampere. Okay, so for example, 0 0.42 ampere or 2.05 ampere. Okay, 2 dp. So this table, uh, make sure you memorize it. Okay, it's very important. So then I put a star here. Okay, next one. So how you process your raw data? Okay, so you'll follow your DP or SF rule. Okay, so if your teacher didn't mention this one, so you listen for this rule. First one, for addition and subtraction, right, you have to follow the, the follow, uh, lowest DP uh, rule, meaning lowest decimal place rule. So for example, let's say you have an addition of what? 12 plus 12.3. So 12 is 0 DP, 12.3 is 1 DP. If you press your calculator, you get 24.3. But... Because you are trying to follow the DP rule, so you follow the lowest one, 0 DP. So you round up to 0 DP, which is 24. Okay, for example, one more example. Subtraction, 69 minus 51.9, 51.6, I mean. So this one is DP 0, this is 1 DP. So in the end, right, your answer should be in 0 DP. So when you calculate it, you get 17.4, but you're going to round off to what? 17. Okay, so always follow the lowest DP in the raw data. Okay, the lowest. If there's zero, there's one here, you follow zero. Okay. One more example. Let's say you take average. It is quite common you take average as uh for example, like taking the period of a oscillation of a pendulum. Okay, so for example, you have three different timing. So you're gonna divide by three. Okay, so each of them are what 2 dp. So you'll get 15.797. So you're gonna follow 2 dp. Okay, so you get 15.80 2 dp. Okay, so some students might say, uh, why you don't look at 3? Because 3 is not a raw data. 3 is just a, a n value. Okay, so you always follow the decimal place of the raw data. Okay, raw data. Or for example, let's say you divide by 20. You don't look at 20. You look at the raw data decimal place. Okay, next one. What about for multiplication or division? You follow what? the lower SF rule. Okay, for example, you multiply 15.3 times 12.41 so this is 3SF this is 4SF so in the end you get what 189.873 and then you follow the lower SF which is the 3SF so you round off this number to 3SF which is 190 3SF okay so very important you can actually use this rule for your calculation in paper 2 as well okay next one what about division 24.22 divided by 1.28 so this is 4SF this is 3SF so in the end you get 18.921 but you follow which one? 3SF. So you get 18.9 3SF. Okay. One more example. 3SF. Okay. 25.3. Okay. So this 3SF. Divide by 20. So take note. Just now I mentioned. It's not a raw data. Okay. So you get 1.265. You round off to what? 3SF. Because this is a division. So you round off to 3SF. So it's 1.27 3SF. Okay. Can. Okay. 
Next. So how do you tabulate the data in your table? So there are some pointers to look out for uh, to prevent you from getting uh, minus marks by your teacher. Okay. So first of all, your independent variable. Independent variable should always be at the uh, left hand side okay, of your table and you always come with the symbol and the proper units. So in this case, uh, your independent variable is the length. So this is the variable that you, you will change accordingly to get the data in the end uh, here. Okay. So this is your independent variable. Next, your dependent variable miss is the variable that you try to measure. Okay. So you measure the period okay, for 20, uh, 20 oscillation, the time. So in your stopwatch, uh, it will be 1 dp in this case. Okay, 1 dp in this case. So you just write down accordingly. And then how you find the t average. These are called the calculated value or the process data, either one. Okay, so these are the calculated value. So same thing, you must write symbol with units. Okay, so always remember independent variable should always be at the left hand side of your table. And then next, the range should be at least half of the entire available range. Okay, what does this mean? This means that, let's say if your length, uh, it can be from 0 meter to maybe 1 meter, okay? So your variable uh, data, right, should be evenly spaced out so that you have a wide range, like 0 0.1 all the way to 0 0.6. You don't do like 0 0.1 then all the way to 0 0.2. Your range will be too small. So try to spread it out, okay? Spread it out. And then, of course, the variable, right, should be either increasing or decreasing by a regular interval. Meaning, let's say you always increase by what? 0 0.1, 0 0.1, increase 0 0.1, okay, so and so forth. Or you always you can increase by 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Uh, try not to jump from one reading to another reading, okay? And then, of course, you need at least six reading, okay? So this one, I think most students will know, okay? Six data points, so that you have enough points to plot the best fit line. Okay, next one. So this one I mentioned just now, okay, the DP should follow the precision of the instrument. So in your uh, meter rule, right, so just now you mentioned in your table, your in meter, it should be 3 DP. Okay, then for stopwatch, in this case is 1 DP, it can be 2 DP as well. So this one really have to depend on uh, what's the stopwatch you are using. Okay, then same thing. So you have T1, T2, you're trying to take average, right, okay. You have to add them up, then divide by 2. So if it's addition, you must follow the DP rule. Okay? So if this 1 DP, 1 DP, this final answer should also be 1 DP. Then what about this one? From T average to the period, you have to divide by 20. Okay? Because it's 20 oscillation. So if it's division, you must follow the SF rule. Okay? So this divide by 20, you get this. Okay? So if this 3SF, this will be 3SF as well. Okay? Can? Okay? So just think of all these points when you tabulate a table. Next one, when drawing graphs, okay, so there are five main points you need to look out for. Okay, namely axis, the scale, the points, best fit line, and of course gradient. So I'll go through one by one. Okay, so for first one, axis. First, okay, title is optional, okay, unless your teacher requests it. Okay. So most school uh you do not need to write a title. Okay. Next one. Okay, you're going to plot y exists, then x exists. So meaning what? This will always be your independent variable. Uh, I mean the dependent variable. The dependent variable should always be the vertical axis. Okay? Whereas your independent variable should be the horizontal axis here. Okay? So for example, sometimes the question will say, plot t against l. Whatever they mention first will always be the y axis, the vertical axis. So t will be here. And then this one will be your horizontal axis. Okay? Whatever they mention will always be the vertical. Okay, so watch out. And of course, you must label your axis with symbol and the official SI units. Okay, next one. Scale. Okay, so what are the things to look out for when you plot your scale or you choose your scale for your graph? So try to choose a reasonable scale. Okay, either you choose increment of 1, 2, 3 or even number 4, 5, 6 or 5, 10, 15. Don't go and choose like 3, 6, 9, so and so forth. Okay, so always choose a good scale. So that when you plot your graph, it will be easier for you. Okay, and then of course the graph should be at least half the size of the graph paper. So don't try to squeeze all your points uh, into just a small corner of the graph. At least half. Okay, or ideally as big as possible. Try to fill up the whole graph paper. Okay, next one. 
the marking should follow the position of the data from the table. So meaning, just now if you still remember, for length, okay, emitter will be in 3DP. So you realize everything here then, label here, right, will be in 3DP. And then for time, okay, time usually will be in 2DP. So everything here will be list down in 2DP. Or if just now the table is in 1DP, right, everything here will be in 1DP. Okay, so you follow the display of your digital stopwatch. Okay, or in this case, will be the calculated value. So calculated value, we just follow um, 3SF. Okay, whatever's in your table, basically. Okay. Next one. Mark off every one big square. Okay, so meaning uh, one big box is 2CM. So every 2CM, you make a marking. Every 2CM, make a marking. Every 2CM, you make a marking. Okay, some students might uh, mark like every half a, uh, 1CM. Okay, it's not required. Okay, so if not, your, your exits uh, will be too squeezy, full of numbers, then you get very messy. Okay, so take note. Even for zero, I'll uh, try to follow the, the DP rule. Okay, so in this case, it's 3DP. So it should be 0 0.000. Okay, don't just put a zero there. Then, but for in this case, okay, because this is a calculated value period will be in 3SF. So everything will be in uh, 3SF. So it will be like 0 0.00. Okay, so just follow the decimal place in your table. Okay, next one. Points. What are the things to look out for when you're trying to plot your points? So first of all, okay, your points should be small crosses. Okay, so make sure you use a mechanical pencil or a very sharp pencil so that the, the, the cross is very uh, precise. Okay, not too blunt. Okay, second one. Each data point right must be plotted to accuracy of half the smallest square. So when you try to plot right, the smallest you can see is what? half a small box okay so that's as precise as you can go next one if there's an outlier point okay so meaning one point that is like too far away from the the every every other point like the best fit line so if you have enough time you should try to redo this this point okay redo the experiment if there's no time you can just circle it and then when you draw the best fit line right just ignore this point as if this point does not exist just just draw the best fit line on other points okay Next one, when you draw best fit line, so some things to look out for. Number of points should be equal on both sides of the line. So let's say for, for example, this line, right? Okay, so you see there are three points, one, two, three on the left-hand side. The other one is one, two, three on the right-hand side, okay? Or if you just ignore this point, which is exactly on the line, and this is an outlier point, so you have two on the left, two on the right, okay? So try to make sure there are equal number of points on both sides of the line. Next one, the best fit line should be as near as possible to all the points. Means it should be quite near to every point that is on your graph paper. Okay. Next one, the best fit line need not pass through all the points. So some students might think that the best fit line have to pass through all the points or as many points as possible. It is not true. Okay. As long as your line is right in the middle of all the points, it can cut through the points good. If not, it is alright. Okay. Next one, so uh, two typical example. So this one is the correct version, okay? So you realize there's one, two, three. Three on the left, and then three on the right, okay? Equal numbers. And then the best fit line is like right in the middle of all these six points, okay? You realize that this best fit line did not cut through any of the crosses. It's okay, totally fine, okay? But this one, if you see, uh, the line passes through one of the points. But here at the left-hand side, there's only one point. Right-hand side, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's unbalanced. Okay, so this is the wrong best fit line. Okay. Next one, gradient. So after you have plot your best fit line, how do you get your gradient? So first thing, you must place two small dots on the two chosen points. So let's say you choose this point and this point. You try to put a small dot there. Okay, don't use cross. Huh? Cross is reserved for your data point. Next one, the coordinates of the two points chosen, right? To find the gradient must be labeled on your graph okay so you have to label this and label this okay and then the coordinates of the two points right must follow the position of the data from the table so if you see carefully your length is in 3dp your period will be in 2dp so everything accordingly you don't just put 0 0.6 okay it should be 0 0.600 and this one is not 0 0.3 it's 0 0.30 okay so just need to label it at the side okay so it's very neat and one common mistake is what some students will try to say use the data points at the two points. Meaning they try to use this cross as one of the points, 
and then this one as one of the point. Okay, so you're not allowed to use that. If you do that, right, then it defeats the purpose of drawing a best fit line. You might as well just take these two points and get your gradient. Okay, why bother to write the draw the best fit line, plot the graph? Okay, so you are not allowed to use the data points as the two points to find gradient. Okay, and then of course, the two points that you chose are uh, the green dots here. Okay, should be as far apart as possible. Okay, and ideally must lie at the junction of the small boxes. Means you choose two nice points right at the junction so it's easier for you to read off the coordinates don't uh, try to choose some uh, weird points that is like right in the middle of nowhere then it's very hard to estimate okay the more accurate your points are the more accurate your answer, your gradient will be okay and the two points must be as far apart as possible okay so one of the points usually it will be at the bottom the other point will be usually at the top of the best fit line okay then of course you need to draw your dotted line your gradient triangle okay so most school teachers will require this, so make sure you have this one, okay? And then of course, you can calculate the gradient using this famous formula, okay? Your emacs or your emacs gradient formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? Your gradient. Next, how you calculate your y-intercept, okay? So sometimes the question, they will ask you to calculate the y-intercept depending on the experiment itself. So basically, there are two ways. First, you can just read off directly from your graph. So if you need to read off directly, right? Make sure you start from the zero on your x-axis. Okay, so you can read off directly. Okay, so you cut the y-intercept. Okay, or the other one is using y go mx plus c. So you should be very familiar from your emacs. Okay, y go mx plus c. Your m is the gradient. Your c is the intercept. So you can just plug in one of the coordinates. Okay, and then with the gradient you calculated previously to find out what's the c. Okay. Next. So, drawing conclusion. So the last part, usually they will ask you, what is the relationship between these two variables? So basically, your conclusion can be categorized into two types. It must it usually be one of them, okay? Let's say if you have a straight line, but it cut through exactly the origin, or very near to the origin, right? So you can say what? Y is directly proportional to X, okay? Y is directly proportional to X, okay? But you have a straight line, but it does not cut through the origin. It cut through like some, for example, like 0 0.100, or it can cut somewhere higher, okay? It's not, does not cut through the origin. So how you phrase it, you say what? Y will vary linearly, okay, with X, with a positive gradient. In this case, positive gradient. It can be sloping down. Let's say it slope down a straight line and it cut 0 0.600, okay? So you say Y varies linearly with, uh, with X, but with a negative gradient. Okay, so basically you have to watch out whether you cut the origin or you don't cut through the origin. If you cut through the origin, it's directly proportionate. If it does not cut through the uh, origin, it will be varies linearly. Okay, so these are the two form of answer. Okay, that's it for part one. So uh, in few days time, I will upload part two, which will involve the source of error and the precaution. Okay, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's all. Bye.